Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Five years later. Hello, bots and listeners, and welcome to the Fire Pit. I'm Dan, British name Nigel. I'm Tom, British name Thompson. And I'm Josh, British name Reginald. And today we're celebrating, celebrating Brian's Bar, Bar Mitzvah. Mitzvah. Yeah! Your mom's full of shit. Sorry, man, but it's true. Uh Uh-huh. What's this about fire? Don't you think that's dangerous? No, ma'am. That's the name of our pod. Children's Entertainment Group. It's it's a whole thing. Yeah, you should know this. You hired us. And the nuclear accelerator is attached to your back? Uh, that, uh, was another job that didn't quite pan out, but... They are licensed. Are you sure those are safe? Oh, no. No. All right, kids. Who wants to have fun? We want 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 He-Man! Why do you want He-Man? He He hasn't been a thing for 30 years. No, he's the meme, dumbass. He-Man! 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 Guys, guys, we're losing the audience. God, Dan, go go get into the He-Man costume. Oh, for fuck's sake, get chased! Oh, thank God the clowns are here. Police, you're under arrest. Oh shit, it's clowns. Dan, Josh, Tom, hands behind your back, you're under arrest. What for? We didn't do any- Oh wait, never mind, now I remember. Officers, come on! You can't arrest us! We're celebrities! Yeah, we're podcasters! We're we're kind of a big deal! I'm sure you are. No, really, we fought Pennywise! We ran for office! Uh-huh. If you're so big, how come I haven't heard of you? Why are you doing a child's party? Yeah, well, you know, the thing is... Yeah, I got nothing. Well, we have been on break for... a while. Tell it to the judge. No, we no, don't! No, no, please! No, I'm gentle! No, I'm delicate! Oh Does this mean I get a refund? No, no refunds! <laughs> So, uh, I guess we're going to be here for a while. What should we do? Well, I've managed to get my phone out here. Ooh. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Ooh. So, I guess we could watch a movie. I can poke it with my nose or something. Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. and listeners and welcome back to the 50th episode of the fire pit Woohoo! 50 Woo! holy 50. shit 50. we did it big 50 baby yeah five oh Woo! Yeah, big 50 50 episodes in i'm dan jedi name can't do it and welcome to the first movie as the fire pit strikes back we're back after a three-week hiatus and since the outside world looks a lot like hoth right now we figured it was a great time to do the Empire Strikes Back. But before we get to Cloud City, we need to evacuate the Rebel base. And what better way to do that than to hitch a ride on tonight's film? 
As per our rules, we've taken an actor or actress from our last film and moved them on to this one. And now to tell us who we're watching and what we're watching, I turn things over to Josh. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I am Josh. Bounty hunter name, Klutzo Tripte. And last time we watched a film, we saw Bill Murray live the same day over and over and over and over and over and over again. Being greeted by one Ken Hudson Hamble. And tonight, we'll see Bill Murray once again greeted by spooks, specters, and ghosts in 1989's Ghostbusters 2, the sequel to the also amazing 1984 comedy action classic. In case you didn't know, the original movie was called Ghostbusters. This movie is the last Ghostbusters film to star the original cast. And later this summer, should have been last summer, I'm still a little stupid COVID, we'll see a proper sequel to Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters Afterlife. But uh, we'll get to that movie when we can. So tonight, though, we're watching Ghostbusters 2. To tell us more about this film, I'm going to send things over to Tom. Tom? <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Tom here. Tom, Sydney. you got something caught in your throat. Oh, <clears> throat> oh thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Josh. Tom here. Sith name Darth Stupidious. And as mentioned before, we are watching 1989's Ghostbusters 2, a film that follows the team five years later, having lost their luster, but having to get the band back together to fend off a new surge of ghosts and some creepy stuff that's happening beneath the city. Now, this film may not look like much, but Buster, she's got it where it counts. This movie stars Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis, Ernie Hudson, and Sigourney Weaver. Has a release date of June 16, 1989, a summer blockbuster. A running time of 108 minutes. It has a rather modest budget of 30 to 40 million, uh, but the box office was a nice 250. 15 million but despite this um not exactly the best received it only has a 54 percent on rotten tomato and a 6.6 on imdb not the lowest rated imdb movie we've seen but definitely down there for a ghostbusters film but i mean we'll talk about it more when we really get into it but this was more of a uh uh kid-friendly version that probably didn't help things out around the same time ghostbusters a cartoon was going on so they tend the to... real ghostbusters thank you josh not those other ghostbusters who technically came first but we'll talk more about that later i'm sure so they kind of um tweaked it down a bit not that they didn't have the same quality that the first one had this one was directed by ivan reitman who did the first one who's expert when it comes to your standard family friendly action comedy drama sorts of films uh kindergarten cop twins evolution junior those sorts of films those are his bread and butter you know something that appeals to everyone without being you know excessively adult the writers of course coming back were dan Aykroyd and harold ramus not ampersand actually i was surprised i figured they ampersanded this but i think the original ghostbusters it was dan Aykroyd's idea and harold said i love this but let's lose the wizards and give them science and that kind of came from that and so they worked on this uh dan Aykroyd, both him and harold have pretty good comedy writing experience and Aykroyd's always worked with teams and he always does well dragnet the blues brothers coneheads harold ramus ghostbusters meatball stripes i mean we saw him in the last film and he was excellent and of course all the previous stars came back i don't think they were missing anyone bill murray served the face as peter vankman king of snark dan Aykroyd, the second banana ray stance which is pretty much dan Aykroyd's career really good at second banana types mm -hmm. he had harold ramus as i said straight man not a lot of acting roles almost all of them he just plays egon spangler mostly airheads national lampoon's vacation then you have ernie hudson 
also from the previous one, which I think the urban legend says he was not their first pick for Winston, but you know, can't really imagine him in anything else. He's the every man in this story reprising that role, even though he's been with them since the beginning, his acting career, not a lot. I mean, mostly television and unknown roles, game of death in 2011, dragon ball evolution, um he is in the crow yeah he's in the crow um but if it's a steady paycheck he'll play whatever role you want him to play <laughs> and coming back of course sigourney weaver is dana barrett the queen of sci-fi herself alien series avatar gorillas in the mist which is not sci-fi but again she brings gravitas and levity with whatever role she plays whether she's the authority the comedy or the scientist rick moranis comes back as lewis tolly those that remember moranis he's a canadian improv actor great with geek roles and the only really new guys that come in are peter mcnichol as janos poa however how, janos the guy that's janos thank dude. you I couldn't. I, there's an S and a Z in there. How do I know? Janos, how long? How many times have you seen this movie? We'll, we'll get, get to that. that. Um, he mostly does television and voice roles. You may have heard him as the voice of Mad Hatter in the Batman Arkham games. Um, he's in Star Wars Rebels. He was in Battleship the movie, and then as Vigo, you have Wilhelm von Homburg who was in mostly TV. He was in Die Hard as James, which I think was one of the. I think it was the brother that um, um, McLean kills. But like I said, no one here is a surprise to anyone that's seen the first Ghostbusters film. And if for anyone that hadn't seen it, I mean, these are all comedy actors. So you're expecting a comedy and you're getting a comedy out of this one. But this one kind of plays it safe. Um, and I don't know how, I mean, it got $215 million in the box office, so it's not like it had too much to compete with. Or did it, Josh? That was a beautiful segue. That was a beautiful segue. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. You're welcome. But uh, I do want to say that uh, Janos, the guy who played Janos, he did play in another big sequel. Um, he was in Adam's Family Values. He was the camp counselor in that one. Oh, yeah, he is. That's right, he was. Mm -hmm. Good memory. Yeah, I got a bunch of trivia about this movie, but I'm not going to step on Dan's toes. But what I will do is I will say that Ghostbusters 2 premiered at number one its opening weekend, which is uh, kind of contrast to the original Ghostbusters. So the original Ghostbusters, I'm just going to give a quick, quick uh, rundown on here. The original Ghostbusters, domestically on its first run, made $230 million, give or take. It spent seven weeks at number one. And I want to preface this a little bit by saying we always talk about how the box office changes a lot with time. And how, like, especially in the early 80s, the box office was completely different than it is today. Like, when Avatar had its, what was it, nine-week at number one in 2009, that was almost unheard of in the modern box office. We hadn't seen numbers like that since the early 90s. Mm -hmm. Now, Ghostbusters, the original one in 1984, had a seven-week run at number one in the box office. Now, that was huge for the time, but it wasn't unheard of. However, unheard of today, it did spend a total of 13 weeks at number one, but not consecutively. It only spent the first seven weeks consecutively. But it spent 13 weeks at number one throughout its lifetime in the box office. So it would drop to number two, hop back to number one, drop to two, drop to three, bring it up to two, back to one, down to two, down to two, up to one, down to three, down to five, back up to one. It's crazy looking at the original Ghostbusters. Now, this isn't a rundown on the original Ghostbusters. I just I wanted to preface that with the original Ghostbusters by saying Ghostbusters 2 made internationally 215 million dollars but domestically it only made 112 which is about half of what the original ghostbusters made uh domestically so this one only spent one week at number one period but at that week it premiered at number one it almost tripled the uh number two box office return so the number two film that uh weekend was on its fourth week of release indiana jones and the last crusade Ooh. yep so uh Sean Connery was in the box office this week, but that only made $11 million to Ghostbusters 2's almost $30 million. But number three in the box office was Robin Williams and Dead Poet Society. Ooh, such a good film. And then, Tom, you'll agree with me when I say that it was Dan's absolute favorite Star Trek film. Was it number four? 
It's his favorite. No matter what he says, believe me when I say this is his favorite. Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. False. Right, Tom? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I like to say that Star Trek V has been vindicated by history. Cybok is no longer the worst surprise Spock sibling in Star Trek history. Okay? We now have another one. <laughs> but anywho, see what I did when I brought up Star Trek? Dan decided to go on a, a tangent, but I'm going to get us back on track. So at number five was, uh, I'm not familiar with this movie, but it's See No Evil, Hear No Evil. But that I was think a part of that one. That's like um, a um, Gene Wilder, Richard Pryor comedy. Oh, yeah, that is that one. It's the one where he's deaf and one of the ones blind or yeah, something, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I, uh, I have seen that one or have heard of that one. I haven't seen it, but I've heard of that one. Now, this, this weekend was actually pretty interesting. Other movies at number six on its ninth week of release was Filled of Dreams. At number eight on its fifth week of release was Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Nine on its ninth week of release was Pet Cemetery, And at 13, 13th uh, place in the box office on its 28th week of release was Twins. So it was a good weekend at the box office. Like, you know, I think we've had a couple of movies. It was released in 89. Like, I think, what was it? Uh, I can't think of another one of the movies. Was it Days of Thunder? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, Top Gun with Cars. Yeah. But that one came out in like the fall, I believe. And it was totally different, but still a lot of amazing movies. And this one. I mean, these are a lot of amazing movies, a lot of memorable movies, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, solid movies. I mean, Dead Poet Society, come on, that's a classic. Roadhouse, I mean, Dan Dan and I have fond memories of that film. That's one of the mm -hmm. best modern westerns ever made. Uh, Twins is just a solid comedy. Oof, and Field of Dreams. How could I have forgot Field of Dreams? Come yeah. on. Yeah. No, this is not a bad year for movies. But, uh... I got to talk about the next weekend, Ghostbusters 2 second weekend in release. Ghostbusters 2 on its second week of release was number three. So take a wild guess what movies dethroned it. Back to the Future. Tom, you failed. But no, it was... Uh, Batman, the 89 Batman. It was. Came out the next weekend after Ghostbusters 2. No shit. Yes, and it made $40 million. Number two was another Rick Moranis classic. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, yep. Wow, that all came in the same year? I know. Dude, those came in within two weeks of each other. Batman and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids was released on the same weekend, one week after Ghostbusters 2. Yeah. Wow. my I remember those having bigger gaps between them. Yeah, this is also the same year of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and Back to the Future Part 2. Whew. Wow. Yeah. So, but yeah, the next week, the box office was Batman, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Ghostbusters 2, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, and Dead Poets Society. That was an epic weekend in the box office. Oh, man. That's, wow. That's a good weekend. Yeah. And yeah. hey, you got a little something for everyone in those. You don't see a box office like these. I mean, most mm -hmm. of the time, it's just like, if it's not like a Disney blockbuster, it's a Sony blockbuster. It's like, explosions and such this one's got a little bit of everything for everyone what's interesting is back then superhero films weren't a thing so batman was a unique film but if you look at this box office ghostbusters 2 second week of release you had two sequels one superhero movie and two original movies honey i shrunk the kids and dead poet society i mean seriously mm -hmm. yeah. and nowadays we would look at a superhero film as the same as a sequel i mean she's like eh, it's superhero film whatever but back then it was just like holy shit it's a superhero film it wasn't just a superhero film like ba batman oh no no that's what we look at it today this was oh, epic yeah. for yeah. the day batman was but w if we ever get to batman we'll definitely discuss that but anywho back to ghostbusters 2 like i told you guys i'll get more on this on my expectations but i am a huge ghostbusters fan always have been my mom and dad can attest to this i dressed up as ghostbusters for like three years in a row for halloween but I know a shit ton of trivia on this, but I think Dan's got some good trivia I on do, it too. I do, I do. I did some uh, digging around for this movie this week. And it wasn't hard. This movie is, while it's only got a 54% on, on Rotten Tomatoes, it's um, it, it's still kind of beloved. It's not as beloved as the original, but it's got a lot of fans. Like Ghostbusters 2 has a lot of fans. So I looked up some trivia on this. And uh, speaking of how popular the Ghostbusters were and how much Josh liked him and dressed as him for Halloween and all that, uh, this movie came out shortly after the cartoon had debuted. Uh, there was a the Ghostbusters, the movie, obviously, and then there was the real Ghostbusters, the cartoon. And according to Ernie Hudson, this is the reason why the sequel isn't seen as having the same level of quality as the first, because it was so safe. 
producers saw how popular the TV show was with kids. And so they forced some changes into the second movie to make it more appealing to younger audiences. Uh, this is why none of the Ghostbusters smoke in the sequel, whereas they all smoked, except for Egon in uh, the first one. The swearing is uh, drastically cut down in this one, and the sex jokes are all but gone uh, completely. Oh, there's one big Yeah, there's a big one, but not as much. You would have to be at least in high school to understand it. Yeah, like the sex jokes were, were very much toned down. Like you will not see any jokes when uh, she says, I want you inside me, and Peter goes, I think it's crowded enough in there already. It's like, yeah, they kind of toned it down a little bit. So they toned down the sex jokes. None of the Ghostbusters smoke anymore. But the same thing happened in the cartoon where too many producers and too many executives kept trying to fix what wasn't broken. But thankfully, unlike the cartoon, which saw a drastic drop off in viewership, which led to its cancellation, the movie didn't suffer too much from it, depending on who you ask. But uh, speaking of the cartoon uh, and changes that they were made in the movie, the poster for this movie, the uh, album cover for the soundtrack, and many, many, many of the publicity photos that were featured in magazines and, and newspapers and stuff across the country featured darker Ghostbusters uniforms. They weren't actually wearing the khaki brown uniforms. And a lot of the pictures and promotions for the movie, they were wearing these darker, almost black looking uniforms, maybe like a dark gray charcoal uniforms designed by a different designer. But you do see him one, I think one or two scenes in the movie. You see him after the courtroom scene, the, the we're back montage, you see him wearing the uniforms in like one or two scenes. And then you do see Winston wearing one when the toaster's dancing. But other than that, you see they go back to the khaki ones because I guess during principal photography, they didn't like the way the new outfits looked. So they decided to go back to the original versions like halfway through filming. And that's why they go back to the regular uniforms. Um, they also toyed with the idea of just like in the cartoon, having them wearing different colored uniforms. But uh, th those uniforms were actually never made for principal photography, but it was batted around for a little while. Like, cause in the cartoon, like they all wear different colored jumpsuits. That was a toy thing. Like, so, so the toys would stand out. And then one more little bit about the cartoon, uh, Janine's appearance in this movie is drastically different than how she looks in the first Ghostbusters film. I am glad you commented on that because if you wasn't, I was totally going yeah. to. Janine is altered in this movie to look like Janine in the cartoon who has bright red hair and wears those like librarian glasses with the, the horned rims or whatever. Like, no, that's what she was in the first one. She had like the really sharp, like crazy glasses. If I remember in the cartoon, um, and she was very librarian esque, but then she went and she had bright, bright red hair. She had bright red hair. Librarian. Mm -hmm. And, whereas I think in the first movie, Janine's a brunette, isn't she? Like she's just a brunette. Yeah, she's just a brunette. Something Annie Potts, like that, yeah. I think they just use Annie Potts' natural hair color, but uh, because they drastically altered her look in the cartoon, Janine went in this movie wears a bright red hair. And looking back, that's just a major downgrade from how she was well, in that, the they, first they kept ghost. playing a lot of it. I mean, I don't want to step on Dan's toes too much here, but like also Slimer was featured a lot more prominently in the sequel than he was in the original one because Slimer's popularity in the cartoon. Cause you got to remember there was two Ghostbusters shows really effectively running cartoons at the same time. You had the real <laughs> Ghostbusters. Oh, 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 okay. oh, I'm going to shut up. On Dan's toes I am. Now. I am. Yep. Go ahead, Tan. Sorry. That was another note I had was that Slimer was more featured in this one because there was a slub plot in the Ghostbusters cartoon that Slimer lives at the firehouse as the Ghostbusters pet or mascot. And that's why Slimer is added into this one, despite being caught in number one. But I mean, obviously, number one, they let out all the ghosts before they go fight Gozer. So Slimer obviously was never recaptured in the movie. So it, it, it makes sense that he could be in the sequel. And yes, Josh, you were right. There were two concurrent Ghostbusters shows running at the time. This movie actually features a dig on the Ghostbusters, the whole birthday party. When the kids are saying, we want He-Man, that's because He-Man was produced by Filmation. Filmation also produced the Ghostbusters, which was a, uh, a TV show that it's the one with the gorilla in it. So when they created a, tele a cartoon show to capitalize on the first movie's uh, success, Filmation actually beat them to the punch and created the Ghostbusters cartoon first to capitalize on the movie's success. But then they wanted to make a cartoon based on the movie continuity, so they had to change it to the real Ghostbusters. And, and actually, I have a little trivia on top of that trivia. If we're going to go down this rabbit hole, the uh, Funimation or Filmation cartoon Ghostbusters actually is based on the live action Ghostbusters TV show from the 1970s. 
Why do I do this? <laughs> Do you have that? I'm sorry, Nigel. You, yeah, you, I you said this is my last tie-in with the cartoon, so that's why I, I said the Slyber thing. So I'm like, okay, he said that was his last tie-in. Yes, so that the means 1975 I... Ghostbusters, and then Filmation made a cartoon in 1984 or 85, and they were trying to capitalize on the Ghostbusters name because the first movie was such a massive hit. So the cartoon was called The Real Ghostbusters, And there's even an episode of the real Ghostbusters in which they go about trying to stop a group of fraudulent ghost fighters trying to steal the real Ghostbusters thunder. But the whole He-Man joke in the movie is a dig at Filmation. It's like, stay in your wheelhouse, so to speak. But yes, it was based on the 1975 movie. Um, And then Josh, you mentioned this when we were doing our table read earlier this week. Ivan Reitman's son, Jason, plays one of the kids at the birthday party at the beginning who tells him that my dad says you're full of crap. And then Jason Reitman's sister plays the girl with the puppy in Egon's experiment later in the movie. And Jason Reitman is the director of the, of the movie Ghostbusters Afterlife, which is slated to come out later this year. All comes back around, baby. And it's also, this movie is an unintentional period piece of late eighties, early nineties, New York portrayed as an apathetic and crime infested hellhole. It's five years before the Renaissance, before mayor Giuliani will start cleaning up New York and starts cleaning up times square And all that. They had to do some careful editing in this movie because at the time when they were filming in Times Square, there's a shit ton of strip clubs and triple X theaters and stuff like that that obviously couldn't be on camera. So they had to move things around, make sure that those things weren't shown. Uh, The pre Disneyfication of New York City. Yeah, yeah. I think that's about all I got. Uh, Also, the design of the Scolari brothers. I didn't notice this until I I looked it up and now I can't unsee it. The design of the Scolari brothers is inspired by the Blues brothers. (laughs) Nice. Yeah, never since I've learned it, I can't unsee it now. So I've never watched Blues Brothers, but I want to say I have seen that trivia. How have you not seen Blues Brothers? Okay, we're going to have to find a way to Blues Brothers now, just for Josh. (laughs) So, Nigel, now that we know what went into the movie, what are you expecting from the movie? Uh, Well, when I was a kid, I actually liked this one more than the first one. And that's because this one, and I can see now why, this one was kind of steered to bank on the Ghostbusters cartoon popularity. And I had a lot of the toys and I watched that cartoon religiously. And that was actually my introduction to the Ghostbusters was the cartoon, not the first movie. And I remember I wanted to watch the first movie and and I begged my mom to buy it for me on VHS. And she kept telling me, it's not like the cartoon. It's not like the cartoon, but this one was geared more towards the cartoon fan base. So I remember liking this one more as a kid. Now as an adult, as I grow older, the first one to me is a classic and it's amazing. And this one is just a serviceable sequel. But I'll, I'll talk about more of that in my final thoughts. I actually haven't watched this one in a while now because I just I haven't. Not since um, the last Ghostbusters film came out. The girl Ghostbusters movie came out in 2016. It's the last time I watched this. So I actually haven't watched this since 2016, 2017, something like that. Mostly because I got done watching the girls' Ghostbusters and I hated it, and I wanted to watch a good Ghostbusters film, so I watched this one because it was the only one I could find on Netflix at the time. But yeah, I haven't seen this movie in a while, so I, I'm expecting, I think I'm expecting to have some fun watching it, but I don't think I'm going to be blown away. I, the first one to me is is much much better. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What about you, Josh? Well, I agree. I, I think the first one is better for me. It, it's funny because I didn't realize that people didn't like this movie until I was a an adult. I remember driving around um, when I was stationed overseas with a couple of people and then we got to talking about Ghostbusters and they're like, I really didn't like the second one. And then they kept talking about how other people didn't like it. I'm like, what? The second one is awesome because I am a huge Ghostbusters fan. I would watch those movies on repeat. And Dan, you know how you say it's been like four or five years since you've seen Ghostbusters 2? It's been probably four or five weeks since I have seen Ghostbusters 2. (laughs) Because, uh... I remember me and my son were playing through the 2009 Ghostbusters game and my kids really liked the 2016 Ghostbusters. And I don't think it's nowhere near as good as the original ones, but I don't think it's terrible. I think it's different, uh, but I don't think it's bad. Okay. It's bad, but it's not like, it's one of those things. I didn't hate it. I think it did a good job for what it was. It tried to be different but it was definitely not as good as the original ones, but I felt like there were different types of movies. You had different writers, different directors, different actors and actresses. But again, this isn't about the 2016 Ghostbusters. So my kids like that one. And I really been wanting to introduce my son to the original Ghostbusters. So when I was playing uh, the video game, he would be playing parts of it with me. 
uh, we kind of trade off the controller. And then um, well, I went back through and we watched the original Ghostbusters, all, both of the movies back to back. And uh, I could probably quote this movie just as much as I can quote the first one. I remember growing up, I was always like, the big difference between the first one and the second one is the second one had better music. I remember thinking that as a kid. As an adult, I'm just like, it's got different music. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's got Bobby Brown. Yeah, it's got Bobby Brown. It's got a nice little cameo by him. The biggest hit was the song that was advertised with this movie that uh, lose control or or whatever. Mm. Yeah, but uh, no, I love this movie. Um, I will, as an adult, through more objective lens, admit that it's not as good as the first one. But for the longest time, I would put Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters Two on par with each other. I don't feel that way anymore. Um, but I do love this movie regardless. Although one major question that I do have for this movie and the next Ghostbusters official third in this trilogy, Ghostbusters Afterlife, is um, in the trailers for Ghostbusters Afterlife, Ecto-1 looks and is the exact same build as Ecto-1 from uh, Ghostbusters 84. Now, bit of trivia that Dan didn't hit up on is Ghostbusters 2, when they zoom in on the license plate, it's Ecto-1A, but there is one scene in this movie where the license plate says Ecto-2, and that's the scene where they pull up outside of the uh, restaurant where they all get out to go in the sewers. It says Ecto-2. So now that there's a bunch of fan theory running around that uh, there's two Ecto-1s or whatever. You had Ecto-1 and Ecto-1A, which are two different cars but it was always assumed leading up to ghostbusters afterlife that it was the same car just you know retrofitted and rebuilt backed up so i don't know i'm curious to see how they're going to handle that in the sequel of this movie but no i know exactly what i'm getting into going into this film i could go on and talk about ghostbusters for hours (laughs) i would wake up every morning watching the cartoon i rented the movies constantly yeah, I absolutely love Ghostbusters. I can't talk more about that. My parents are probably listening to this and they're just nodding their heads like, yep, mm-hmm, yep, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep, I remember that. I remember that. But anywho, enough with my thoughts. Yeah, funny, right before we get to Tom's real quick, funny bit, My I got in trouble as a kid because I was playing with my Ghostbusters toys and I was quoting the first movie and I had my Venkman toy say, let's show this prehistoric bitch how we do things downtown. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> and my mom's like, Daniel. <laughs> like, oops. What? I just said prehistoric. What's wrong with that? <laughs> well, yeah, Tom, what are your expectations, my friend? Well, unlike the both of you, I have not seen this since I was a kid. And I loved this as a kid. We had it recorded from HBO back in the day, and I would play it constantly. Not as constantly as the original Ghostbusters. We had that on the original VHS, and I played that basically until the tape broke. But this this one I also love because, like the both of you, it was closer to the cartoon. And I absolutely love the cartoon. I am concerned because there is a track record with me and films that I have nostalgia for from my childhood. And I'm thinking that this is going to be some bitter nostalgia pill taking. I don't know where I'm going with that metaphor. It's going to suck for me. This is going to hurt. This is me going back to my old hometown and playing in that great, you know, this, you know, this jungle gym was so awesome. I go there. It's like, wow, this actually is pretty mediocre. Um, I don't know why I thought this was such a big deal. I'm looking forward to the soundtrack. I mean, higher. I'm looking forward to that scene because I love that song Um, and the Bobby Brown song. I prefer that song of the soundtrack, but I'm hoping it's not going to suck as much as I'm afraid it's going to suck. But hmm, more than likely, it's going to be a safe film. That's just going to be disappointing for me, but I'm not going to be wowed. I've been wrong before about that sort of thing. It might be like, I still might think it's better than the first one like Kid Me did, but Nope, nope, this is going to be um, maybe not the strongest start. But uh, thank you for talking a lot about the uh, Lady Busters film, Josh, because you're putting in perspective, this is not the worst Ghostbusters film we could be watching. Uh, But I got off track here. But those are my thoughts. I'm not expecting a whole lot from this film. I'm not expecting to hate it. I'm just going to probably be... A little bit disappointed. Ah, oh, but I wish I knew more about this movie. I wish, or maybe like how other people felt about this film 
when it was out. I mean, do we do we? It's only Tom. If only Tom, we knew. do you want to take a guess at what people thought about this movie? I would love to, Josh. <laughs> awesome, because I am going to go ahead and quiz you on it. Yay! Pop quiz, hot shot. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to just speed through this segment, aren't we? <laughs> yes, because hopefully it lasts longer than it took me to draft this quiz. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. hey oh. But anywho, okay, so on with this quiz. So this is Ghostbusters 2. We're just going to go base surely off of titles, because that's probably what drove most audiences to see this movie. So, um, I forget. I know I won last time, which means that Dan had to be the one giving the quiz, because Tom never wins. So, um... I think, though, since I can't quite remember, Tom, I'm going to take pity on you, and I'm going to let you go first this time. Oh, I love pity. Okay, okay. Sock it to me, baby. All right. So, this one was said by James Linton-7525215 in April of 2016. He said, like its predecessor, this film made little impact on me. And this is just a title. All right, standard one through ten rules. Whoever yep. gets closest gets the point. I'm going to Can't say, pick the same thing. I'm going to say six. Nigel? Um, I'm going to say four. Oh, and you guys, it was a five. It was a five out of ten, so no points are awarded this round. Mm. We're off to a great start, Nigel. Uh, <laughs> off to a great start, or a shutout. Potentially a shutout for Tom. <laughs> All right, so Dan, this one is to you. By one, Casey Nicholson, too. He said, just a few months after the uh, first one, in August of 2016, a great, parentheses, but cheesy, 80s sequel. Seven out of ten. Thompson? Eight. Oh, and Tom, on the dot. Boom, baby. It was an eight out of ten. So I get double points, yes? Yep, two points to Tom. Tom is in the lead with dos points. All right, so Tom, to you. And this one is by Cinematic underscore Aficionado 9, who said many, many years before the previous two questions, in May of 2004, better than the original dot, dot, dot. Oh, God, I'm going to say three. Nigel? It's, that's it, better than the original dot, dot, dot. Yep. One. Tom, what did you say? Three. Tom was closer with that one. It was a five out of ten. Really? Yeah, it might be a shutout for me tonight. Wow. I know. Hell of a way to start this journey, Dan. Yeah, well, I'm loving it. It's, yeah. a new season. it's a new season. All right, well, Dan, here's a chance for a comeback. You're down by three, but if you get this one on the money, you'll only be down by one. So, BK Ogden Bing 22, or B. Kogan Bing 22, said in October of 2009, their number is still in the book. T H E I R there too. <laughs> in 2009, their number is still in the book. Um, considering this guy doesn't know how to put a sentence together, I don't even know if he knows how to count to ten. Uh, <laughs> he capitalized is in the. Oh. <laughs> their number is still in the book, and he capitalized is in the. So I don't know if he went to school or he was probably still in school when they were before they learned about capitalization, but. Yes, all that, all the words are capped. He got the correct there, I hope. Their number is still in the book. No punctuation. I'm going to say a 7 out of 10. Thompson? 10 out of 10. <sighs> it was a 9 out of 10. Ooh, Holy wow. shit. Tom, you've got four. There's really no way Dan can come back from this. So let's get the last question. I want to make right, it we're still gonna We're going to still do the last question, but oh. Ah. Let me drink this moment in. Yes, give us the last question, John. All right, well, uh, Tom, this one is by C.C. Agle, or Kagagle, <laughs> dash 43. In July of 2006, he said, Ghostbusters 2, colon, why bother, question mark. One. Nigel? Uh, two. Oof, that was a one out of ten wow. review. Oh, my God. My love, take me higher, higher. Wow. <laughs> Shut out for oh, me. I know. Damn, I'll, have to, I'll have to redeem myself next week. Six points to Tom. Wow. Oh, 
my god this is a new season team we're oh. back baby yeah <laughs> i'm never taking time off again man wow this is uh six in the box one in the hole no you're supposed to say red god damn it tom you fucked it up again <laughs> Oh god. But just gosh. just for the sake of doing the uh bonus one. Nigel, I'm going to go ahead and look at let's see if we would have at least gotten this one. Okay. Better than the original. Dot dot dot. Oh wait, no, it's the you same did one. That I, one. The first time. <laughs> I did that one. Man, just, wow, good thing we didn't go to that one. <laughs> you know what? It's okay. It's okay. I will take I will take my loss on the chin. I will admit defeat here. I will never take time off again. Just Tom, play the music. Your love taking me higher. Welcome back to another hauntingly good episode of The Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and paranormal investigator, Tom. And according to these readings, it looks like you're dealing with a class 2 free-floating specter. But since it's paying most of the rent anyways, I think you can let it be. But thank you for letting us be your podcast of choice as the ghost of winter continues to haunt you. It's the start of season 2 here at the fire pit and we couldn't think of a better way to kick it off than with a trip to the sequel of all sequels, The Empire Strikes Back. But right now, we have to go back and bust some ghosts in the sequel of just a sequel to Ghostbusters. Speaking of busting, let's bust in on the team and see how that whole arrest thing is going. Kitten, I think what I'm saying is that sometimes shit happens. Someone's got to deal with it. And who you going to call? 911. Always 911. That's who you call in these situations. Yeah, but... You... No! 911. I'm done, Your Honor. <sighs> Tom, Josh, Dad, stand up! Stand up. On the charges of breaking into a museum, having someone kidnapped by an AI. <laughs> that was fun. Silence! Unsanctioned execution by electric chair. <laughs> no, he's still alive. Look, he's right, I mean, he's, he's right over here. Silence! <laughs> Possessing some kind of slime substance. Yeah, yeah, what, what is that stuff, Tom? And, and why does it keep dancing the angrier the judge gets if you knew what i had to do to fill that thing up you wouldn't be asking i'm not finished and finally possessing unlicensed nuclear accelerators so nothing about the murders what nothing Nothing. this court finds you three guilty on all charges tom tom your your shit's twitching that's gross and sentence you to 18 months in a correctional facility if my hands weren't tied by the unalterable fetters of the law I would invoke the traditions of our illustrious forebears, reach back to a pure, sterner justice, and have you burned at the stake! Where are those bastards? Oh shit, it's the ghost of Sean Connery! Rest in peace, my ass! You owe me those photos, you sons of whores! What the hell is that? That's the uh, ghost of uh, Sean Connery. That's Sir Sean Connery! Yeah, we blackmailed him into guest starring on an episode of our podcast a while back. Yeah, we meant to give him the material back, and then we kind of didn't. I'll have your asses, you fire pit podcast. Especially yours, Josh. Your ass is specifically mine. Hey, hey, Judge, Judge, Judge. We know how to get rid of him. And do it! So, will you say drop the charges? <laughs> all right, all right, I rescind the order. Case dismissed! All right, yes, we won a case! Woo-hoo. Hey, Sean! What? Shoot. Two in the box. Ready to go. Ahoy, hoy! God damn it, Tom, you fucked it up again. Oh, for fuck's sake. Way to ruin it there, bud. <laughs> My courtroom. So, we back? We're back, baby. Hell yeah. High five. 
Ah, our flawless judicial system at work. Gotta love it. Speaking of love, we would love to hear from you. So if you have any work you'd like to have advertised or input on the work we're doing here, feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just put fire pit in the subject line, as well as what it is you're emailing in regards, whether it's for an ad, a question, a recommendation, a correction, a summoning spell, and let us know what you have. And from there, we'll read it, scan it for any spectral anomalies, wrap it in a photonic beam, store it in a laser grid, and never respond. You don't want to be haunted by the ghosts of emails past, but that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com, capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. Uh, you're hoi hoi? Uh huh. Uh huh. You don't say. We'll be right there. <coughs> Sounds like we got another one! I got a slimer I gotta take care of, so I'll let you get back to the episode. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck! <laughs> And now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. Why is he wearing pajamas with the president of China on him? What? Finally, a Ghostbusters episode. And mine's buffering. First episode of a journey. They have the technical difficulties. Tradition. My wiener is super hard. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not putting that in. Dun -dun. You should put that in. No. That's what she said. Hey, oh, uh, <laughs> now you got to put it in. That's what she said. <laughs> Five minutes in. I'm already regretting this. <laughs> Dead baby. Woo. Floors off the uptown high rise. Ended up getting sued by every state, county, and city. Thanks for explaining things I already know, buddy. Exposition. That was for the audience. Come on. Egon seems like the type of guy who would, uh, in order to find a cure for something, would infect 100,000 people and see who survives and then test them. I don't think he's a Mengala. But he wouldn't say no to one of those projects either. I always like it when my boss comes to my door in the middle of the night. And then he, uh, you know, his eyes glow and he walks away. Wait. Yeah, he's an accountant. So yeah, that so Dana Barrett managed to get an art degree in the five years. He got a law degree and passed the bar exam, apparently. None of their careers post Ghostbusters make sense. Well, I do not recognize the existence of ghosts. I don't believe in them either. I want to hear a lot of malarkey about goblins and spooks and demons and like I said before, the Ghostbusters universe version of 4chan has to be a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Their truthers are right. <laughs> Sometimes shit happens, and who are you going to call? 911. Always 911. <laughs> I love that judge. That judge is my favorite character. Oh, yeah. Woo! Woo oh yeah, let's test the limits of this PG-13. Fine. The atomic weight of cobalt 58.9. Yes. <laughs> I only assume that it is because the way Ray reacts. Well, it was 58.9 at the time of the movie with the better, more accurate atomic testing. The weight actually changed to 58.8 in about 1997. Oh my god. Got every family in the 90s had that fucking thing. What, a bathtub? No, that fucking styrofoam thing for babies. Yeah, we had one for my brother Tony. He was about, he was about, he was about Oscar's age when this movie came out. So yeah, They just usually washed me in the sink. See, I lived in Kansas. They took me outside, chained me to a fence, and they would hose me down with a hose. Didn't matter what time of year it was. I don't think that's true. But most of your stories are horrible, so I'm going to say, yeah, probably. <laughs> I have more than two grades of one. 
okay? There's not just clean and dirty. There are many subtle levels. Yes. As an adult, I get this so much more. Who has just a whole bunch of severed heads in a subway? What the shit? Lifting me. Lifting me. Lifting me. Oh. Oh, yeah. Dude, you would not want that many people on the fucking street. Yeah, these are bad cops. <laughs> this is really bad crowd control. Yeah, pack them in, guys. Let them be on the street while we're walking a giant behemoth made of steel that's kind of ran by an NES controller. See, look at how close they are right there. They can't fit through those spokes right there, right? Yeah. And yet they repel out. That's one of the many inconsistencies I've noticed about this film over the years. So let me get this straight. This movie's about a giant river of slime and a 16th century like magician coming back to life and possessing a baby. And that's where your suspension of disbelief stopped? Yes. Okay. I'm just just checking. Well, that d d magic. You can put that under the blanket of magic. That right there is like... I'm they just, didn't just, like, I'm break just, it out I'm, or anything. I'm just checking. I'm just checking all okay. the shit in this movie, and that's where your suspension of disbelief... I mean, they just piloted the Statue of Liberty with an NES controller, but that's... You're right. The windows were too big. I love that the guys with the proton pack went towards the painting, <laughs> and it was only uh, yeah. Winston decided to spray Ray. Like, oh, okay, I wasn't going to shoot Ray with the proton pack. <laughs> We're not going to kill Ray? We're not going to kill Ray. Okay. You know the military applications of that slime? You take anything and just lace it with that? Play higher? Dude, Mech Warrior would be a thing. Mech Warrior would totally be a thing. Awfully convenient that nobody was underneath the Statue of Liberty when it fucking tipped over. No, that's the part they don't tell you about. <laughs> Dan. There were like 30 people under yeah. there. They this is why it took 30 years for a sequel, guys. They were in jail that long. Really, Dan? A, a movie about m ghosts and that's where your uh, suspension of disbelief stops? <laughs> yeah. Grow up. Didn't at one point you say the dichotomy of us is uh, is the Ghostbusters, Dan? Yeah. you're e Actually, you're Egon because you're the smart one. Tom is Ray, because he's also kind of smart, but not as smart as Egon. And I'm Peter, because I'm the most personable. I also hate everything. This is accurate. Yeah, that works. And I always make the bad sex jokes, too. Just like Egon. And Matt, Matt's Winston, because he's not always with us, but when he is, he just fits. <laughs> Does that make Danielle the, um, is she the Dana, or is she the Tully? Definitely the Tully. I'm putting that in. And now, back to the episode. That was Ghostbusters, ladies and gentlemen. So here's a summary. It sucked. Holy fuck, this movie sucked. Oh my god, I knew it was going to be bad, but I didn't think it was going to be that bad. Holy shit. I'm not as pissed off as I have been in past films. There have been some duds and thuds that we've watched in the past, but really, this movie... It would have worked pretty all right as like a first season episode of the Ghostbusters cartoon show. But as a standalone movie, as a sequel itself, it just blew donkeys. And that's really the curse of most sequels where it's like, hey, it worked the first time. We've got no new ideas for the second one. So let's do the same thing all over again. Let's reset everything all over again. Let's just have everyone forget everything that happened in the first film. We had a 40 story tall non Euclidean horror made out of marshmallow destroy downtown. Well, fuck these guys that saved us. You know, we're not going to take them seriously at all, even though they are the only people who know what's going on. The mayor dealt with these people last time and they're the reason i got reelected. what but no fuck them they're dumb they're all dumb everything is dumb how and why was any of these actions allowed to happen the second film should have been like they saved the city and now they have like a franchise that should have been the second one but instead like no it's the same movie from the first one only less so oh my god i enjoyed parts of it don't get me wrong there was a lot of enjoyable stuff in it. 
mostly from nostalgia, the dancing toaster, the sliming, some of the one-liners, but nothing memorable about it. I'll save some of my other complaints about pacing and such uh, for later, because I'm sure you both might have some opinions about the quality of production, the directing, the writing. But for me, just the overall package of this film was diet caffeine free stale ghostbusters one <sighs> but like i said i won't go too much more into it right now josh your final thoughts well i'm gonna go ahead and take a political stance on this and because your opinion differs from mine i'm going to hate you personally for it okay all right i'm kidding i'm kidding <laughs> no um it's one of those things. It's like you were saying that and I wanted to get mad at you because I want to say you're wrong. Like, especially in your initial reaction to it. It's like, it sucked. It was terrible. It was bad. I'm like, no, it wasn't. Fuck you, Tom. I hate you. And then you started explaining why. And I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, okay. that That's true, too. Okay, I, shut up, Tom. I still don't want to hear it. But uh, <laughs> no, 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 you're right. Basically, everything you said is right. But I still love this movie. And maybe it's just the curse of a sequel because... I said the same thing after watching Die Hard 2. So um, maybe my opinion isn't as weighted in the positive in this one. I don't know. Because you guys heard me quoting the movie lines as we were watching it. I've clearly seen this movie a lot. <laughs> I think milk tastes better when I drink it out of my Ghostbusters glass. So, Well, that's not just you, Josh. That's just That's been proven by science. That is. That is. Yeah, if this was any other movie, it would be bad. It's still better than the 2016 Ghostbusters. Because seriously, okay, some of the good things about this movie. Amazing character chemistry. Oh my god, when the four Ghostbusters are in a room and they're playing off of each other, they feel like genuine friends. You know? Like, the way Peter interacts with Dana. Mm -hmm. Oh, just the chemistry all around is awesome. I just love how well everybody plays off of each other. This is like an ensemble... That just works. And it's a damn shame that we didn't get to uh, get back to this sooner. You know, seeing all four of them together on screen would have been amazing. One of my critiques of, you know, tying this into the journey to Empire Strikes Back um, of the sequel trilogy is we never got to see Han, Luke and Leia and Chewie in a scene all together at the same time to play off each other. Because that was half the fun of the original trilogy was their chemistry you didn't get to see that you got to see that in this sequel but it's a damn shame we didn't get a third movie to see all of that yeah the story was kind of weak i think it definitely had more layers to it but then uh as we pointed out going into this movie it definitely was tweaked in the script stage yeah there was just clearly producer editing into here make it more like the cartoon yeah i still like the movie but i see its flaws i mean they're pretty obvious Obviously, a lot of plot holes. I know Dan jokes, uh, that's where your suspension of disbelief ends. But th there's just a lot of annoying things about this movie that just kind of like you look at it and you're like, okay, that's... I can believe the other stuff, but that is just uh, annoying. It's like it's not bad, but it's annoying. And, uh, you know, but overall, I love seeing it bigger and better. I mean, but yeah. The other aspect is, yeah, Tom, I hate how you point out the uh, the way that they reset everything and make the Ghostbusters go back to square one is annoying. But yeah, it's like objectively looking at this film, it's a bad film. But nostalgia is a hell of a drug. I acknowledge <laughs> this openly. So even though I objectively see this as a bad film, I absolutely love this film. Now, granted, if you told me to rate this film, I think that IMDb's rating of like a, what was a six point something? Mm -hmm. I 6.6. 6. I think that's about 0. 0.6 higher than it deserves. But um, yeah, it's like I, I can acknowledge that it's a bad movie, but I still enjoy it. Dan, how about you? I'm kind of in the same boat. I'm not going to be as harsh on it as Tom was, but this movie is it's even more safe a sequel than Die Hard 2 was. And that was a paint by numbers safe sequel as well. Like that was worked totally against that movie's detriment. And it works against this one too. Part of me didn't mind the revert back to square one originally when they were talking about how after the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man exploded and rained marshmallow and, and fire down on everyone in the city, we got sued into bankruptcy and that's why we can't be Ghostbusters anymore. Okay, 
I can buy that. But then when they started going into the realm of we're court ordered not to be Ghostbusters anymore, and somehow everyone forgot about ghosts. <laughs> Like, everyone stopped believing them, which was the whole point of the first one, was getting people to believe them. And they went back to people thinking that they're, um, you know, uh, uh, charlatans and snake oil salesmen, and, and you know, they they play on people's paranoia, and they're con artists. And it's like, no, the first movie proved that they're not. Like, they, they saved the world in the first movie. And honestly, this movie, to me, falls apart completely after the courtroom scene. Uh, the courtroom up until the courtroom scene, it's still kind of it's funny and it's still kind of original. And I kind of like the, you know, the, the characters trying to move on past their Ghostbusters lives. And then they go into the courtroom scene and they come back and they're Ghostbusters again. I, after that, the, the scene, the movie just becomes like really head scratchy. I, I was joking with you, Josh. That's where your suspension of disbelief is. I should have asked that to every character in the movie that wasn't a Ghostbuster. Like you guys had to have seen or read the newspaper reports or even... I know not everybody had camera phones back then, but they did have television cameras back then. Someone somewhere has video footage of the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man romping and stomping through downtown New York. I, I don't think anyone would be this skeptical. The only way I would buy that level of skepticism from other characters is if they had moved the Ghostbusters to a different city in the sequel. Like if instead of in New York, the Ghostbusters moved to Los Angeles and they're trying to be Ghostbusters in Los Angeles and no one in Los Angeles believes what happened in New York City. Like mm -hmm. if they had moved them to a completely different city, I would buy that level of skepticism. You know, that would be a really awesome thing to do too. Because I mean, if you think, sorry, kind of tangenting off you, but you know, make it to where like, Vigo appeared in a museum in LA. So the Ghostbusters have to relocate just temporarily. That would be yeah, unbelievable. Like, yeah. I mean, that would make a lot more sense than the city that they literally saved questioning them. Exactly. That, that was my biggest gripe with the movie. Like, especially that mayor's aide kind of like, you know, you know, you guys are, are false. You, no one believes you. You guys prey on people's fears and paranoia. You're nothing but con artists. And then he has him committed to an insane asylum. And then like the doctors in the insane asylum are like questioning the Ghostbusters and they're telling them about their adventures and they're telling them about the other plot points in the movie. And the doctors in the insane asylum are like scribbling notes, clearly indicating that they think the Ghostbusters are insane. And I'm like, we're only five years removed from the State Puff Marshmallow. I thought 9-11 truthers were blind to the facts. But like this is like there would be documented video evidence of the State yeah. Puff Marshmallow Man you know, climbing that building. There'd be Ken Burns style documentaries, like yes. with violins in the background. Like yes. I was there on Stay Puff Day. So if they had changed the sequel in a way that the Ghostbusters had to move to LA or Chicago or like Houston, Texas or something like another major city that's very far away from New York and the Ghostbusters had to operate in that city, I can see that they would have citizens of the other city be skeptical of what actually happened in New York. Like, oh, geez, that's just New Yorkers being New Yorkers. They're always so overdramatic. You can have lines like that, but the fact that it takes place in the exact same city, only five years removed from the first one, and yet somehow more than a dozen people actually don't believe the Ghostbusters actually did anything substantial in the first movie, I don't buy it. Yeah. I'm okay with the litigation part. I'm okay with the fact that they got sued into oblivion and they can't be Ghostbusters anymore. That actually sounds realistic. It just bothered me that having to basically redo the whole first movie all over again. Except this time without EPA Walter Peck, the man who had no dick, we've got the mayor's aide, who also doesn't have a dick, being the same kind of character. So, yeah. Um, Would he really have the kind of authority to just have a bunch of people committed like that? Against I he probably know. did it. Um, mental gymnastics again. <laughs> Um, he probably did it with the authority of the mayor. Yeah, he probably forged it in, in a way that he probably told them that the mayor wants these guys locked up. And because he's the closest guy to the mayor, uh, maybe someone just took him at face value and did it. So, but they, they, there's no scene to show it, you know, and it probably in real life. No, he doesn't have the authority to lock someone up against their will. In real life, the mayor doesn't have the authority to lock someone up against their will. Like, yeah, I was going to say probably that. one of those things. Do this as a favor to the mayor. Yeah, yeah but even then, uh, that's like that's a whole can of worms right there. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to think too much into it, but I mean, it just. My problem with him it wasn't him having them committed. My problem was with the fact that he didn't believe a word they were saying, and it didn't make any sense because it's only five years removed 
from the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. If, if they do the same thing in the newest Ghostbusters movie, and a lot of people don't believe the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man thing happened, I'd be a little more okay with it because it's 30 years removed from... Yeah, yeah it's going to be the small Marshmallow. town and such. Yeah, because it, it's like... Yeah, uh, yeah it seems like it's going to be a small town in the Midwest. Mm-hmm. And uh, ghosts and Stay Puff Marshmallow Man? What are you city folk talking about? Yeah. Honestly, I really hope that they acknowledge the movies. They don't just like hand wave that the sequel never happened. I, in the trailer, the one where Paul Rudd is like, oh man, this is, you got a nice replica ghost trap. And then he talks about and shows the video clips from the original Ghostbusters. I really hope they keep to that. To the point where it's just like this. Actually, this is history. This actually happened because I remember when I first saw the trailer for uh, the 2016 Ghostbusters reboot. The very first trailer basically said that 30 years ago these guys saved New York. And I'm like, oh, it's canon. Okay, so it's a it's a uh, what do they call long form sequel? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. I was super excited about that because I was like, okay, that makes a lot more sense than uh, just a complete reboot. You know. Mm-hmm. And then when the movie came out, it was a complete reboot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like yeah. you got to honor your forebears. Yeah, and- yeah, and you you can't insult your your original audience either. So, but I'm but I don't want to dive into the the 2016 version of Ghostbusters too much because I'm too busy bitching about this one. Um, same, same. Yeah, it's just so. Like I said, I get it that like back then there weren't camera phones and not everybody had a camera on them. But definitely, while that whole Gozer situation at the building was going on, there would have been TV cameras there, and the TV cameras would have for sure seen Stay Puft Marshmallow Man walking down the street. And absolutely, that would have been live footage at the time. Global. I mean, CNN oh, yeah. would have been there. It's like, what the fuck is happening in New York City right here? Yeah. And like giant forty story marshmallow man. Rawr. Yeah. Yeah, all I know is Dan, I love your fan theory about the uh Ghostbusters, the uh marshmallow man truthers. Yeah. I just I think that the conspiracy theorists would just be going crazy because in their yeah. universe, they're right. Yeah, they're one hundred percent right. Like we laugh at a lot of conspiracy theorists in our well, the real world, because most of them are like warong or or they're, they're way wrong, or they're like, you guys are getting a few details mixed up, you know? <laughs> but like, uh, these truthers, like Stay Puft Marshmallow Truthers, and that's what I'm going to call them. I'm going to call them Marshmallow Truthers. Marshmallow Truthers would be absolutely going Fluffer Nutters. They're, they're Fluffer Nutters. Nutters. I like that. Fluffer Nutters. Um, are we going to go yeah. with G Anon for Ghostbusters Anonymous or M Anon for Marshmallow Anonymous? Both, because. Both of them would be absolutely screaming from the mountaintops because they're right. It depends. Okay. On, yeah, it depends on which side of the spectrum you're on. It's like, I guess uh, Ghostbusters and on would like not believe that. No, they would believe that the the Marshmallow Man was real, but Marshmallow and on was like, no, that was just some dude in a rubber suit. It's all stage. Yeah. And actually, the Marshmallow Truthers, the Fluffer Nutters, <laughs> they um they would actually be more not so they're, they're not an allegory for nine 11 truthers. They're more of an allegory for flat earthers because you can argue back and forth that all this different evidence that could be fa- possibly be fabricated from nine 11. And it, I don't believe you, but it, it, it might have that tiny kernel of truth that makes you go, huh? Especially when they say like, Oh, it's a government conspiracy. And you're like, yeah, it could be. I've, yeah. I've seen wag the dog. It's, yeah. yeah. They can, they can easily hide behind that. The stance that, Oh, the government let it happen because they got da 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 knowing that this was going to happen and that they could do this. There's no way to prove that. It's the teapot um, fallacy. You know, yeah. it's like I can't prove that there is a teapot floating in orbit between Earth and Venus, but I can't disprove it either. So therefore, it must be up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But 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 flat earthers would be the equivalent to the marshmallow truthers in Ghostbusters too, because we have documented proof that the earth isn't flat and yet flat earthers constantly come up with new excuses as to why it's flat and why there's a cover up and to why this, that, and the other. And marshmallow truthers would be the opposite. There's documented proof that the state of marshmallow man attacked New York city in 1984 and four guys stopped him. And yet everyone else would be like, I don't, there's no proof of that. That didn't yeah. happen. There's no way that happened. Yeah. Or it's just even this, like, it's like, so you believe that a 40 story, giant marshmallow man walked down new york okay sure 
Gotcha. <laughs> Marshmallow doesn't melt at 100 degrees. No, no, no. I told you they're not 9-11 truthers. They're flat earthers because the flat earthers keep coming up with new reasons why the earth is flat, despite all the overwhelming evidence that it is not. Yeah, but I'm saying most people would sign them off yeah. when they try to explain a 40 foot or 100 foot marshmallow. Yeah, they are the opposite. They have proof that the marshmallow man actually happened. And yet the, everyone else is saying, no, that didn't happen. That, there's no way. And like we got, there's TV footage. And NBC was there. They had a giant camera. It was like, nah. <laughs> like, this whole movie requires Olympic level mental gymnastics to explain away all these goddamn inconsistencies and illogic. I totally agree. Like it ruins the enjoyment of the movie. As funny as some of the jokes are, and as funny as some of the moments are, and I agree with you, Josh, that the chemistry with the um actors was awesome especially you do get the feeling that they're genuine friends you know working together so i like that but the rest of the movie just falls apart when everyone when people just don't believe that ghostbusters actually did anything five years ago and and to kind of build off of the uh the chemistry guys yeah the chemistry was there but i didn't feel like the heart was in any of their performances they all delivered well enough but it just felt like it was phoning in except when peter um not peter but bill murray was playing with the baby I thought like none of them really cared. Like we're we're actually doing this. This is the same film we made five years ago. Why are we doing this? Oh, a paycheck. Oh, okay. there's some truth to that because when I was looking up for the trivia for this film, there was like moments where they wanted to do different things with the script, um, and uh, the producers and the executives kept like steering it back towards no, 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 no. We want to do this. We want to do this. We want to do this. And it eventually became kind of like, basically, well, it did. It did become the same movie as the first one. And guys like Bill Murray and Harold, well, not, yeah, Harold Ramis, a couple of them weren't very happy with it. And you could tell, like, in their performances, they weren't happy with the script they were being forced to work with or the story they were being forced to tell. And I can kind of understand if they were that much resentment and that much anger and that much um, annoyance with uh, how safe they played the sequels. I can kind of see why, like, Bill Murray and them, they want to come back and do a third one. I, I can see why. Mm-hmm. I can see why they were very hesitant to come back and do a third one. Yeah, because they, they basically walked all over uh, Dan Aykroyd's script and just went. Yeah, his it. was going to be more like, well, the video game. The video game with the interdimensional um, mm-hmm. bad guys and the, the Evor, what, what are the, I, Evor Shandor, the guy. Evor, I, I, yeah, Evor Shandor, Ivor yeah, Shandor. Yeah, they were going to do like Ivor Shandor, Evor Shandor. Um, he was going to be the big bad in the, the, the second movie, and they were going to do like this interdimensional hopping and that's where they find out ghosts actually come from other dimensions they're not dead people or something like, that. like they had this whole like mythology thing they were going to dive into it and the, the producer's like no 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 we want to go back to like just catching ghosts and singing the theme song and all that good stuff and you're like but it's the same movie as the first one <laughs> yeah and it made millions therefore yeah. uh, <laughs> continue continue i think i said all i'm gonna say <laughs> yeah i mean i think we all agree though the soundtrack was choice yeah it was a good soundtrack uh, i liked the acting i didn't see any major issues with the acting um but i do understand your arguments that it feels like it was phoned in at times mm-hmm. um but yeah i think we did hit all of our notes so uh yeah yeah i got nothing else i mean good directing on reitman's part but um, I, I got a question else. for you guys i got a question for you guys would you recommend this to anybody stop stop yeah. <laughs> no. just no, something i, I want to add for season two no you know no. What? <laughs> i like this idea josh i support it you know what i think dan's right it's a terrible and idea that's I, I'm it for sorry tonight's show ladies and gentlemen <laughs> number 50 finally in the books as always uh you can find us on spotify itunes amazon or wherever fine podcasts are sold uh, our regular episodes are tuesdays at 6 p.m and Please like and subscribe or whatever medium you use or choose to use to uh, listen to the podcast. We really appreciate it. It helps us out. And be sure to join our Discord channels as well. Links in the episode description and at firepit.podbean.com. You'll get notifications of new episodes and even better or worse, you'll get to chat with us and other listeners. It's a really fun time. Uh, we like to talk about episodes as they're coming up, episodes that have passed. And come in, join the discussion. We all uh, have a good time in there. Also, you can reach out to us at our email, which is mentioned back in the interspersal segment. If you want to send us a long message, a short message, a happy message, or a sad message, although hopefully happy, but it's up to you. Also, 
feel free to like our page on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter, both of which are linked in the episode's descriptions. And from my side, I'd like to shout out to special guests, Danielle and Matt, who lent their voice acting talents to our cold open and interspersal segments, both of whom have been friends well before the podcast, well into the original Fire Pit days, and we're glad to have them on. They actually have British names, too. They do. Philip and Clarice. That's how far back they go. They've earned their British name. So thank you both for popping in. It was a thrill and a joy. Yep, definitely enjoyed having them on. Yes, and I'd also like to uh, shout out to a few of our Facebook followers, our Facebook fire pitters. Amon and Kenny, thank you for joining. There's also Devante. Uh, we got so many more to go through and more each day. Thank you for keeping those fire pit fires burning for us. And uh, I would like to shout out to and uh, remind everyone as well. Um, Good night, Punk from the Shattered Order podcast. He did finally get back with me and he agreed to be a special guest star on our Empire Strikes Back episode. So we'll have two guest stars, uh, Winkiller and uh, Good night, Punk. So thank you guys. Special shout out to you for joining us on those episodes, upcoming episodes. Additionally, special shout out to uh, my wife. I love you. Don't uh, leave me. <laughs> Don't get that giant Vigo <laughs> painting you were talking about before. I want to get the Vigo painting. And I'm after watching this movie, I might get it. <laughs> Soon to be future ex-wife. So don't 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 leave me when I get the Vigo painting. Oh, and uh, a special shout out to my mom again too. She absolutely loved uh, the ending of our Q and A. She was super fucking happy with it. She always thought it was the best fucking question and best fucking answer she'd ever fucking heard. <laughs> fucking A. I love you, Mom. You're the best. That's amazing. Well, I will give a special shout out to Peggy, the old school friend of the channel. Uh, thanks always for listening. Uh, and then a shout out to Rob uh, from Rob's Custom PCs because uh, this journey is one I think you're going to really like. <laughs> so uh, we're going to one of your favorite movies of all time. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I've been wanting to do a Star Wars movie, too. Yeah, but special shout-out to them, and also special shout-out to uh, Tyrick Thorne, Nick, uh, and Liz, our other Discord listeners. Uh, they're always talking, chatting, um, uh, interacting with us, so that's always uh, great. And special shout-out to Zencaster for letting me know I was using the wrong microphone today. Uh, and uh, that's all I got for tonight. So, Josh, where are we going, where, where are we going next week? Well, Dan... We are going to go to a galaxy far, far away. Wait, wrong one. We are going to go boldly where no man has got... Wait a minute. No, that's still wrong. We're going to watch Galaxy Quest. No. Yes. That's the name of it. Galaxy Quest. What's the tagline for that one? It's the fourth best Star Trek. It is. I don't think that's a tagline. I think it was uh, never give up and I'll never have what she's having. Away. That's it. Bye, Grabthar's hammer. That should be a great episode. By Grabthar's hammer, she shall not be ignored. I don't think I got that right. By the sons of Warvan, you shall be avenged. And until then, I've been Dan. I've been Josh. I've been Tom. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Good luck out there. And here you go, sir. Pleasure doing business with you, boys. Thanks for tugging our butts out of the fire back there, Sean. Honestly, if you hadn't came, we totally would have been hosed. Gross. You're just lucky I didn't change my number. You bastards better not pull this shit again, though. Remember, I'm a ghost now. I see everything. E everything? <laughs> yes, everything. <laughs> and Tom... You're disgusting. <laughs> uh, still gross. Sean Connery out. So how does a ghost get a cell phone reception? The joke helps if you don't overthink it. Asking Tom to not overthink is a exercise in futility. That it are. Thank you, Judge. I mean, what? <laughs> Why are you still here? Why are you in the basement with us?
Shit. <laughs> I, my courtroom was ruined. I, I didn't have anywhere else to go. But could you please put pants back on? No. You don't need to fill up the jizz jar. <laughs> it was half full. I'm leaving. Yeah, Dan's already done. <laughs> my slime. <laughs>